There will be four free response questions on the AP Pre-Calculus exam. This video is modeled after FRQ3, which is about sinusoidal modeling. That's modeling a real-world situation with either a sine function or a cosine function. Let's pretend this is from the 2002 AP Pre-Calculus exam. If you appreciate the content, please give it a like. A sewing machine rapidly lowers and raises a threaded needle through a small slot in a steel plate. One full cycle consists of the needle moving from its highest position to its lowest position and then returning back to its highest position. The needle completes 12 full cycles every second. Point B is at the bottom tip of the needle. As the needle moves up and down, the height of point B above the steel plate periodically increases and decreases. At time t equals 0 seconds, B is located at its highest position, 9 millimeters directly above the steel plate. At its lowest position, B is 5 millimeters directly below the steel plate. The sinusoidal function H models the height of B above the steel plate in millimeters as a function of time t in seconds. A positive value of H of t indicates B is above the steel plate. A negative value of H of t indicates B is below the steel plate. Part A. The graph of H and its dashed midline for two full cycles is shown. Five points F, G, J, K, and P are labeled on the graph. No scale is indicated and no axes are presented. Determine possible coordinates t, h of t for the five points f, g, j, k, and p. First, let's try to determine the maximum, minimum, and middle output values. The highest position of point b is nine millimeters above the steel plate. h of t has a maximum value of positive nine. The lowest position of point b is 5 millimeters directly below the steel plate. That's a minimum value of negative 5. We can find the middle value by taking the average of these two numbers. 9 plus negative 5 divided by 2 is 4 over 2, which is 2. So the middle value is 2. We have now found the output values for all five points. Next, we will try to determine the input values for each of the five points. At t equals zero, b is at its highest position. So we need to pick one of these high points and call it t equals zero. Let's call the input value of point f t equals zero. To find the remaining input values, we need to determine the period. We are indirectly told the period right here the needle completes 12 cycles every second. But the period is the duration of one cycle. We can turn 12 cycles into one cycle by dividing both sides by 12. If we divide by 12 on the left and the right, we discover that one cycle is 1 12th of a second. So that's the period. P is 1 over 12. The period is the distance from high point to high point. So the distance from point F to point P should be 1 12th. So that's the input value of point P. Half of 1 12th is 1 over 24. And half of 1 over 24 is 1 over 48. We can use the first mark after zero to find any missing input values. We can simply count by one over 48. So this is one over 48. This is two over 48, which reduces to one over 24. But the next input value is three over 48. And the next input is four over 48 and then 5 over 48, and uh, that's probably enough. 3 over 48 
reduces to 1 over 16. Well, that's it. We found the input values for all five points, and we already had the output values, so we can begin to list the coordinates. You are not finished until you list out the coordinates of each point. Point F is at 0, 9. Point G is at 1 over 48, 2. Point J is at 1 over 24, negative 5. Point K is at 1 over 16, 2. And point P is at 1 over 12, 9. Part B. The function h can be written in the form h of t equals a times the cosine of b times t plus c plus d. Find the values of the constants a, b, c, and d. We have memorized that one period of the parent function y equals cosine t looks like this, and one period of the parent function y equals sine t looks like this. Since h of t is a transformation of the cosine function, let's trace one period of the parent function onto the graph of h of t. Let's write an equation for h of t based on this period of the graph, filling in the values of a, b, c, and d as we go along. Let's start with the a value, which is closely related to the amplitude which is the distance between the maximum value and the middle value. 9 minus 2 is 7, so the amplitude is 7. The amplitude is always positive, but the a value is sometimes negative. Since this period that we have traced is oriented the exact same way as the parent function, then the a value will be positive. The a value will equal the amplitude. So the a value is 7. Let's move on to the b value. We have memorized that the b value is 2 pi divided by the period for sine and cosine. So in this case, we found that the period is 1 over 12. So the b value is going to equal 2 pi divided by 1 over 12. When you divide by a fraction, you multiply by the reciprocal. So the b value will equal 2 pi times 12 over 1. So that means the b value is 24 pi. And that can just go right here. Next is the c value. The c value is the opposite of the phase shift, which is the input value of the beginning of the period that you're focusing on. Since this period that we are using begins at zero, the phase shift will be zero. Normally, I would say the opposite of this value. Like, let's say this had been, I don't know, two. Then uh, the phase shift would be two, so therefore the C value would be negative 2. But negative 0 is still 0. So the c value is simply 0. Which you don't actually need to write in here, but I'm going to put it plus 0. That just leaves the d value. The d value always corresponds to the middle output value, which in this case is 2. So d is 2, which goes right here. On the AP exam, you're allowed to just leave your answer like this. Or, you can give the individual values of A, B, C, and D like this. Part C. Refer to the graph of H in part A. The T coordinate of F is T1, and the T coordinate of G is T2. In other words, T1 is here, and t2 is here. So this problem is about the interval between f and g. C part 1. On the interval from t1 to t2, which of the following is true about h? Is h positive and increasing? Is it positive and decreasing? 
Is H negative and increasing, or is it negative and decreasing? On the interval from T1 to T2, we see that the output values are all positive because all of the output values are between positive 2 and positive 9. Also, between T1 and T2, H of T is decreasing. We can see that the output values are falling from left to right. So, on the interval from T1 to T2, H is positive and decreasing. So the answer is B. C part two, describe how the rate of change of H is changing on the interval from T1 to T2. Notice that this time we are talking about the rate of change of H, not H itself. We have learned that wherever H is concave up, the rate of change of H is increasing. And wherever H is concave down, the rate of change of H is decreasing. On the interval from T1 to T2, H of T is concave down. Therefore, the rate of change is decreasing. This describes how the rate of change of H is changing on the interval from T1 to T2. It's safest to answer with a single word. Just say decreasing. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe, but also if you found this video helpful, there's a lot more where that came from. You can click the upper link, which will take you to the whole unit playlist, or you can click the lower link, which will take you to the next video in the playlist. See you there.